Hey guys, what's going on? It's Doconic here, and welcome back for another Top 5 Tuesday. And this Tuesday, we are going to be doing the Top 5 Best Support Intelligence Units that are available in-game. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I provide here on my channel, don't forget to hit that like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications, that way you get the most recent and up-to-date information about Dragon Ball Z Doken Battle delivered directly to you. Thank you, enjoy the video, and have a great day. Alright, so real quick, let's go ahead and go over the rules. Of course, as always, no Doken exclusives will be used, and no LRs will be used. Any other card is fair game, that includes free-to-play, world tournament, Baba Shop, uh, any summonable unit that's not a Doken exclusive. That also includes cards that were gifted to us by Bandai, and banners that are only around one time and may only be around one time. I will also be doing a review of all the passives on the cards, including where to Doken Awaken them from, if they have Doken Awakenings on top of the medals that are required, and what event they run. And the only thing we will be taking into consideration is the passive skill, because we are going to assume that these cards are going to be on rotation. So the passive skill needs to benefit the entire team. The only time the passive skill will not be the only thing taken into consideration is when we have a tie for a specific place. At that point, the link skills, and if there's any secondary effect on a super attack or a passive, such as stunning the enemy or sealing a super attack, or if we have someone who just has a really good damage output. Will that that will be taken into consideration at that time only. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the review of the cards. And once again, I will be doing the rankings after the review. The first card we're going to talk about is True Child Prodigy Super Saiyan Gotenks. His passive skill is Fused Fighting Force, Intelligence and Tech Key plus 3. He Doken Awakens from Defying the All-Powerful Super Saiyan Trunks Kid. His passive skill is Limitless Future Tech and Intelligence Type Key plus 2, which is not really that bad in itself. And he is available to Doken Awaken with 21 medals from the Unparalleled Paragon of Hope event, that's the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks event. The next card is Orb of Girlish Wishes of Balma Youth. Her passive skill is Incisive Intellect, Key plus 2 for all allies, with a medium chance to stun all enemies. She is available to Doken Awaken from Seeking, Thrill, and Romance Balma Youth. She specifically is available for, from the World Tournament Prize's Dragon Ball Saga Summons. She Doken Awakens with 77 Monster Carrot Medals from the Bizarre Rabbit Mob event. The next one is Demon King's Oppression Debora. His passive skill is Demon King's Duress, high chance of attack plus 20% and key plus 2 for intelligence types. He's available for 30,000 Baba Points at the Baba Shop. Now real quick, just if you were aware, if you're looking to purchase anyone from the Baba Shop, just keep in mind that it's better to wait until there's a sale. At this point in time, it is June 25th that I'm doing the time of this recording. The Super Saiyan 4 event that should be coming out, they should be available on discount for 21,000 Baba points, which is a lot cheaper. They might be available now at a discount rate. I didn't double check this because I know we have a sale going on. The next card is going to be Vile and Violent Turlets. His passive skill, Ripe Fruit of the Tree of Might. It's key plus 3 and attack plus 20% for all allies when HP is 50% or above. He Doken Awakens from the Fearsome Tree of Might Turlets, whose passive skill is Power of the Tree of Might's Fruit, key plus 2 for all allies when HP is 50% or above, but by no means is that a bad passive as well. He's available for Doken Awakening from the Tree of Might event, level 11 which is called the Blood of the Saiyan Race. He requires seven Turles Warrior Metal Marks. And last but not least, we have Energetic Fighter Pandel. Her passive skill is Whoop of Victory. Attack plus 30% for all allies. She Doken Awakens from Pedigree of Justice Pandel, whose passive skill is Call to Arms. Attack plus 25% for all allies. She is available to pull from the Dragon Ball Fusion specific banner and Doken Awakens from seven Pan Medals, which are available on two separate events. The first one being the Dragon Ball Fusion's Diffused World, from level 1 if you go down the path to fight Karoli, or from the GT event, Dragon Ball GT Black Star Dragon Ball Saga. Her medals are available on level 6, Lude activated. Alright guys, let's go ahead and jump into the rankings. Now, the last three spots over here are very difficult for me. Um, the fifth place spot is not as difficult, but the fourth and third place are definitely a lot more difficult to choose. So, fifth place, we're just going to go over real quick, Energetic Fighter Pandel. Her passive skill again is Whoop of Victory, her attack plus 30% for all allies. The thing about her is, while she does give a really nice unbridled attack boost to everyone on the team, which is always more than welcome, her link skills are very lack, 
uh, Fuse Fighter isn't relevant really that on a, a mono intelligence team, except unless you're running the intelligence Vegito. And even at that point, she's not really gonna, you know, y you might be able to link her well with him, but you're, you know, it, it's not as relevant because no one else really has that on a mono intelligence team. Shattering the Limit, not so much. GT, really not so much. And the same lineage in Fighter and Battlefield Diva, not at all. I mean, in Fighter, maybe you might find one or two that are that are more relevant on that team. But her link skills are very lackluster. She does supreme damage, which is great. But she's also only available on a banner that comes once around once in a while. Now I have to take all this into consideration just because this and the next two are really hard to, to for me to make that decision. And if you think that these guys should have been in different orders, please let me know. Uh, I more than welcome your thoughts on the matter. But I put her in fifth place. The next one we're going to do, or we're going to talk about, is the Orb of Girlish Wishes, Balma Youth. Uh, now, she and the next one are really tied just because of the differences between the two. Uh, her passive skill and of intellect key plus two for all allies, so it's an unbridled key for a uh, plus two for everyone. But she also has the passive skill medium chance to stun all enemies and her super attack. While it only does extreme damage, she has a rare chance to stun enemies on that, so she has a double chance to stun all the enemies on the field. Now, her link skills kind of suck. There's, there's really nothing that she'll, no one should link with on a mono intelligence team, at least in an ideal set. And her stats are very low, 8800 uh, HP, attack of 6022, and defense of 4400. The one thing that she does have going for her is that you can technically grind out her super attack um, if you get lucky from the pulls, because these are all Dragon Ball summons pulls. Uh, but when you get her off the super attack 10, her super attack will go off at 9 key, and her 12 key multiplier is 140%. So she'll at least she at least has that going for her. Um, again, it was a very tough decision. Now the next one that I put into third place is going to be Demon King's Oppression to Bora. Now the reason why these two were so so tied is because his passive skill is you know RNG based. It's a high chance of attack plus 20% and key plus two for intelligence type, so it's not guaranteed to go off. Now Balma's stunning of the enemies is definitely good for the health of the team, um, and the key plus two is guaranteed. But when the Boris goes off, he actually gives you key plus two and attack plus 20%, which is definitely amazing. He also has Nightmare and Fear and Faith, which specifically there's not a lot of intelligence, at least transcendent ultra rares. Uh, just to name a few, you have Android 13, Metacora, and the intelligence Nemo for Fear and Faith, and Nightmare, you have actually a decent amount. Um, now these are also a couple that aren't available on Global yet, but you have Android 13, you have the Super Android 17, Android 18, Metacora, the Evil King Piccolo, and the old school one, the old guy, and uh, Janemba. So that, that's taken that into consideration because those, you know, some of those guys, especially Janemba, are definitely a lot more relevant to have on a team. Uh, on top of that, he has better HP and he's actually a lot easier because he's obtainable all the time. So it really, that was actually really my last decision is the fact that he's always available. You don't have to wait for a world tournament to get him. You could, as long as you have the Baba points, you can go and purchase him for 30000 unless there's a sale. There is a sale going on right now. I did double check between the analysis and this video. The sale is currently going on uh, June 25th at 11.32 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can go ahead and grab him if you have the points. So he's always available. But anyway, that's why we came in third place. In second place, we have the true child prodigy Super Saiyan Gotenks. His passive skill, Fused, fight, uh, fused Fighting Force. Intelligence in key plus three, so it's an unbridled key plus three. That's always welcome, especially if you have uh, a two leaders with key plus three. That's key plus nine. You only need three more orbs. I'm assuming there's no other link skills that are going off to give you key. It's just really amazing. He's really, really good on a mono intelligence heroes team. He has Golden War, Super Saiyan, Fuse Fighter, Prepare for Battle. Um, the Innocence, not so much, and maybe Formidable Enemy, depending on who you have. But for the most part, those four, the four first links that I had mentioned are definitely a lot more viable. And while he's technically not farmable, because he's an SR, he drops as an SR originally, he is more common, so you could wait until you get enough of him to get him up to Super Attack 10, so when you do doken him into his Gotenks version, I mean, yeah, he only does extreme damage, he will be doing a little bit more damage, but that passive skill of key plus three for intelligence and tech types, definitely, definitely more worth it. Now, for first place, as you all probably have guessed, it's Vile and Violent Turlets. Now, you might be asking why, because his is restricted based off of his HP, while the Gotenks gives an unbridled key plus three. Now, that's very true, and the reasoning behind it is because while, yes, it's restrictive of his passive skill, it has to be HP or 50% or, abo or above, which is definitely not ideal at all, he does also give that attack buff when he meets that criteria. Um, his super attack, he has a high chance to stun the enemy, which is about 50%. Uh, 
So 50% of the time, he's stunning the enemy you're going up against, which, yeah, uh, it's nothing major, but it did. It, I did need to take that into consideration between the, these two, between the Gotenks and him, just because they were a little bit harder to choose. But the other thing is his Link skills. You know, he has two, one really good Link skill for heroes and one really good Link skills for villains. You know, his Link skills, Saiyan Warrior Race and Prepare for Battle are really good for a, a heroes team or, or to link with heroes. And Big Bad Bosses and Thirst for Conquest, those are both really good for villain teams. Thirst for Conquest, not so much, and Saiyan Warrior Race, not so much, just because they're lower tier because there's a lack of people who actually have them. But they are viable for heroes and villains. So, I mean, not only is he a good unit that stuns the enemy and buffs, the, buffs everyone with his passive skill, he also has decent links. And his health is outrageous, 10,100 for his health at max stats, and that's not including the dupe system. The other thing about him is he has a grindable super attack. As long as you get one of them, you can grind out the superior suppressor Turles from the Tree of Might event. That's the strength one. If you haven't watched that, like, you should have a pop-up coming up right now. You can go ahead and watch that um, to explain how to get him. But he's just amazing you can give a super attack 10 supreme damage super attack 10 high chance to stun the enemy a passive skill of key plus three attack plus 20 percent for all allies and some decent link skills and really good health and a decent attack stat as well key multipliers is only 135 percent but the, the first place had to go to him so that's all that there is to it guys that's who i chose for my number one spot definitely make sure you run a turlis support unit for a mono intelligence team um, if you need him he is the best support unit but there are definitely better cards you could run uh, they do typically link very well together, I'm not going to lie to you, the intelligence units definitely link very well together. But that, that Turles, even though he doesn't do high damage output overall for who he is and what he brings to the table, he is definitely someone you would want to run on a team, even if you really don't need that actual support. That's it guys, thank you for joining me here today for another Top 5 Tuesday. Consider hitting that sub button if you are new here, and I'll catch you guys in the comments below to see what you guys think.